go through a bit of a rundown of what we've been doing and where we'd like to go. So it was a, it was a gossip on the grapevine of City Hospital that we had something called soft fix cadavers that were different to our normal cadavers that you may have had in medical school and they could be very useful for everything from surgical dissection to any anaesthetic -y techniques. So they were being touted as being a very good tissue feel so anything that you did was almost human-like but they would last an awful lot longer than fresh frozen. They were already being used for surgical teaching, there were quite a few courses getting run by the surgeons through City Hospital and the repository there uh, and even doing laparoscopic work because of the feel you could inflate an abdomen and have a rummage around like the surgeons do. So originally Mark Barley and I had a saunter down uh, I met Mark Carwood who's in charge of all of this and had a look at one of the soft fixes and things that they'd done and it did feel very good. I, I took an epidural kit down with me, popped them on side and popped an epidural in and it felt really exactly like a normal human alive in the anaesthetic room, which was very different to anything I'd had before doing dissection in labs. Uh, you can easily position a soft fix because you haven't got a rigid body, there's not rigor mortis there and it's not formaldehyde firm either, so you can bend a head down and move a body around should you need to. So as I said, I think it was about 2018, but the midst of COVID have uh, wiped that memory, I'm afraid. And the first formal session was run and we had about 20 trainees on that Divi day and it was just part of the round robin teaching for their thoracic day. They came down to the repository um, uh, into the back of the morgue, uh, played for an hour of what we did and then moved on. The small groups that we had were quite good because they all got several attempts at a thoracic epidural. There was a bit of chat and teaching and angle discussion and things like that whilst somebody else was having a go, but they could very quickly rotate around and it was very easy to chat with them. Now we at that time were given a soft fix cadaver um, because they were the repository is very keen on building up the repertoire and there was one available because it was about to be used for a surgical course. And as we were only going to put small puncture wounds around the thoracic spine, we weren't doing anything front of abdomen, which is what they needed it for. We weren't getting charged for it. To get a cadaver built or a for, uh, soft fix and given to you costs between two and a half and three thousand pounds. So if you're going to destroy one, it's not an insubstantial cost. So that day received very good feedback. Um, everyone felt that they had increased confidence in doing thoracic epidurals and for some of them that was their first attempt at doing a thoracic epidural which was nice to do in a pretty calm environment. So Covid hit and everything stopped and I uh, completely forgot that I'd ever done it and it was early 2022 that I thought we could probably have a go at doing it again and was in contact with Mark Carwood who was very keen to increase the things that get done there. So I thought I'd better get on with it. There's not many thoracic epidural opportunities left for trainees through NUH anymore. Um, the big elective work that use it repeatedly, so HPB, upper GI, is out of module for most people. Colorectal still use quite a few. The epidural rate in thoracics has dropped massively in the last 10 years because they're doing a lot of things VAPS and robotic and their surgical infiltration techniques have really improved massively, uh, which has just reduced epidurals to very, very few now. Um, so I think this is where the training opportunities have probably become quite selective, to say the least. So when I approached Mark Kerwood, there were no surgical courses around the time that I wanted to or was available to do the teaching, so we didn't have a soft fix. But uh, he suggested we try an unfixed or fresh frozen cadaver and see what that was like. So we did. And although it is still very cold, despite being out the freezer for 24 hours, uh, the tissue feel is very, very close to real life, but it is exceptionally chilly to the touch, which is a little bit off-putting for some people. So again, we got some feedback and it was universally deemed useful. 
low numbers of previous epidurals were common, so about three to ten, and this was opened up to all registrars or um, stage two, stage three nowadays. Okay. And we asked the trainees where they felt this training would best fit in, how often, and yearly was the most common response, and at least every stage of training was was the next most common one. And stage two seemed to be suggested as the best time to initiate training like this because you'll have the most opportunities to gain something from it. So this year came around and uh, we got a bit more ambitious. So I've been uh, one of the novice trainers or allocated novice supervisors at City Hospital for quite some time. And one of the things that has always been quite difficult I've found to teach is getting them to do spinal anaesthesia. So you're trying to explain quite a detailed procedure to a trainee who might have an awake patient in front of them at that time. The trainees are understandably a bit nervous doing this for the first time, which is certainly not a bad thing. And it's difficult to get familiar with equipment that you've all certainly never seen before. And the specifics of drawing up injections by not squirting things into your um, intrathecal syringe and things like that are difficult to grasp all these things, I think, in when you're quite worried about it and you've got a patient that's awake and you don't want to make the patient think that this person's never done it before, which unfortunately might be the case. So why not do spinal teaching on a cadaver? Um, well, we tried and we almost got there. So uh, in the picture in the top right hand corner, that's an epidural catheter, an 18 gauge. So in order to get some feedback, I thought we could try and fill up the fecal sac with a bit of saline. And access to that was going to be a bit difficult because what I didn't want to do was put a spinal catheter in through the normal lumbar approach and leave that catheter in the way of the trainees because it gives them far too much of a guide on where they need to go. And we thought we'd make it a bit harder for them. So we did a sacral approach with an ultrasound machine and put an 18 gauge to eat all the way to the hilt just about until we felt a good pop threaded in a catheter which was relatively easy to thread funnily enough filled the space with saline and then tunneled the catheter out the way because the fresh frozen cadaver was about to be frozen again and then being pulled out two weeks later to do the course we uh, managed to tape it it managed to survive and we managed to refill the space the next morning when we got started and then allowed the trainees to have a crack. Unfortunately, not a single trainee managed to get free flowing fluid and neither could I uh, during the session which she popped into in the morning. It was a little bit irritating after all my work, I'm going to be honest. Whilst all this is going on, the registrars were still doing their thoracic um, playing. So I, in the afternoon, then had a crack and did an easy spinal with free flowing fluid. I can only presume that there was a pocket of frozen fluid still within the back that had finally melted and um, or maybe I was just lucky but all four novice trainees had uh, a good couple of attempts at a spinal and they were certainly in exactly where I would have gone as well so I don't think it was them I think it was the cadaver. So the thoracic epidural teaching where we had about four groups through um, we have a very pepper potted back, which you can see this is sort of late in the day I was taking these photos. But even though we've had multiple attempts by multiple trainees, it still feels like a virgin back in a fresh frozen and it also is the same in a um, soft fix as well. We do keep the cadavers lateral. I had thought that I could take down a surgical table and use some bolsters and get a cadaver sitting upright, um, but time got away from us a little bit. But doing it lateral is a harder technique. And if you can do it lateral, you're almost certainly going to be able to get it uh, when they are sitting upright. The little things I'd forgotten was previously we'd used air, we hadn't used saline, because when you've had about 40 or 50 attempts at an epidural you do get quite a lot of salty water through the back and the landmarks do start disappearing. Uh, air makes that an awful lot easier and most of our trainees had about four attempts and one or two were exceptionally enthusiastic and kept going all the way to the bitter end of their two-hour session and hopefully got an awful lot out of it. 
and every one of the trainees has success despite the fact this was a very very old cadaver in his late 70s or early 80s lateral and not in the best position so the benefits of running this um i think are probably for the trainer the trainee and the patient that the patient can't be paralyzed because they're already dead and that's a very good sign it's a far more relaxed way to teach i find you can you can laugh about things you can joke about it you can be very honest when their approach is going wrong when their technique is good you can say things like oh that's pretty good for your first attempt and the patient doesn't have a panic attack the trainees can just keep rotating round and a two hour you know a two hour session really is quite a long time so you're certainly not going to be spending two hours putting an epidural in, in a patient if they're not successful you're going to take over and the trainees i think have the ability to get a little bit irritated with themselves if they're not successful because they shouldn't be successful every time that's you know they are training we're all in fact i struggled on this cadaver as well to get an epidural in once or twice and then they can be um they can be honest about it whereas you you would hide everything in front of an awake patient so trying to think about what we do now the year on year feedback has suggested that stage two and stage three should have this opportunity opened up to them many wished yearly updates and that might be possible depending on the numbers that are coming through and it's probably a good idea i think as a deanery that we offer something along this line given the very small numbers of thoracic epidurals that our trainees are reporting that they get to do from the spinal teaching point of view um i have some ideas about how to make that a little bit more successful and i don't see any reason why we couldn't be running novice teaching on the six monthly basis when the new starters come to us so that they do get a good session of practical teaching on spinal anesthesia they get to know the kit they get to know the landmarks they should be happy by the time they leave our session and then when they start on patients hopefully the consultants that are supervising them are a little bit happier as well we've had many chats between mark kerwood i and others about what other practical procedures could be offered using the cadavers because they're very keen that this service is expanded as much as possible. We asked the trainees after the first and second times through, what else would you like done to this? Central venous access popped up, so subclaving lines are infrequently done by a lot of trainees, and they felt that would be very useful. Uh, regional teaching was mentioned, although that's very difficult to offer in a cadaver, because by the time you start injecting the first and second People get a reasonable view, but after that, it really does tend to disappear, I find. Uh, there's front of neck access that we can do. There is the possibility of doing skin flaps from the single patient. So you can have a skin flap for every single person coming through and you just whip the front of the neck off, uh, put a new skin back on so you still get the landmarks, although it won't last that long. Uh, and really, the, at the end is where where does your imagination take you in reality? I think that there's so many regional courses offered around here and NUH does the same as well, that I'm not convinced that uh, regional anesthesia is something that I would pursue. I certainly wouldn't be teaching it personally anyway. Um, and I don't think the cadavers are that useful for it. I think there are better ways of teaching that. So when chatting to Mark about what we could use and what we could get, Fresh Frozen is relatively cheap and running any course, they um, certainly are much cheaper than a £3,000 soft fix. Once you've taken them out of a freezer, they only last four or five days. But they do feel good tissue feel. Um, they do smell a little bit, but you can quickly get over that if you're only there for two hours. The eight hours I was in the repository was a bit different though. If we can get our hands on soft fix models, they do last for months. The tissue feels excellent. Very easy to plan a course in advance because a soft fix will be sitting around in a cupboard. And you're not hoping that there is a cadaver that's been donated at the last minute for you to use for a course that's coming up in the next week or two. If anyone's keen to help, um, all offers of help gratefully appreciated. Mark Kerwood is open to any ideas that you come across.
it's a free location to NUH courses. We could get multiple cadavers for further courses as well. He's very happy to offer that in a much larger area in the postgraduate centre than the small room in the morgue that we've been using. And if we do need soft fix or prefer soft fix for courses, then we could get them to discounted rate, especially if we're not going to be destroying them and they can be used for other things. And for our trainees, I'd hope that things like this could probably attract some deanery funding, since I think practical procedures taught in this way are far greater than the experience that they would get dotting around trying to get training opportunities within theatre, because as I've said, I think epidural opportunities are few and far between across NUH and even less so out in the Dean and out in the DGHs and for the novices starting spinal anesthesia teaching in a hands on way without worry for them, I think is probably where we should be aiming. And if there's any novices around that have done it, they can come and uh, they can feel free to put your comments in and we'll take them on board. Thank you.